Amen. I, I want to start preaching now because otherwise I'm exploding. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, my, my background is German. And when I'm, I'm in Germany, my German people, most of the time they say, Reinhard, you shout too much. Can't you tone down? I said, I am already toned down. I, th I, th I said, no. Then I preach again and they said, you know, we are not deaf, you know. I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it. And I, I, can, I got the answer and it makes me shout even more. Can I tell you why? I told them. When I see how Satan torments our young people, and not only our young people, all people, how he binds them with chains of fear, of bondages, of perversions that are unspeakable. When I see how Satan torments people, I cannot purr like a kitten. I want to roar like a lion. Jesus saves. Let Florida hear it. Jesus saves. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to preach the word of God. Then we are going to have a salvation prayer. After that, we are going to pray for the sick. And I believe Jesus is here. Get ready. Even while the word is preached, power is already going out. Scripture says he sent his word and healed them. Some of you will be healed while I preach. While I am preaching. That's biblical. That is the word of God. And we know it. Now, I'm an evangelist. I don't apologize for it. I am not here in a preaching competition. I don't want to have the first prize in preaching. But every time I take the microphone, I've got one burning desire in my soul. I want hell empty and heaven full. Hallelujah! Because the Bible teaches us that hell was not made for man. It was made for Satan and his angels. So, if hell was made for Satan, I'm not swearing when I say to hell with the devil. And to heaven with the people. That is why we preach the gospel. Say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I always tell the people, if you don't enjoy my preaching, it's okay. I enjoy it myself. <laughs> All right. I, I now want to come to the ABC of the gospel. I've preached on this scripture many times. I've seen multitudes, humongous multitudes, pressing into the kingdom of God. And tonight I want to give to you what God has given to me. I read to you from John chapter 8. It's the story of the adulterous woman who faced the light of the world. I read, I take the time to read the scripture because I want to walk you through it and you will be blessed and I pray you may never forget it. Promise? Now early in the morning Jesus came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down 
and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? And here, listen carefully. This they said, testing him or tempting him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So, when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no man condemned you? She said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Amen, amen, and amen to the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, before I start preaching, I just have got to give you some introductory information so that we understand what the real big points are. So, I'm going to give you a little bit of teaching. And when I start with my preaching, I will let you know. Okay? Now, the Pharisees hated Jesus. And the reason was, Jesus was more popular than them. It was pure jealousy. Because the Bible says that because of envy they delivered him to be crucified. That's what jealousy can do. They wanted to catch him, then have him arrested and have him removed. That was their plan. And they were hatching a plan to make that possible. They said, this Jesus, the people say, is the Messiah for whom Israel is waiting. But he cannot be the Messiah. We are sure, those theologians said, Jesus cannot be the Messiah. Because we have proof. Proof number one. We saw Jesus and watched him when he walked through the streets of Jericho with the biggest sinner in the city, Zacchaeus, and accepted Zacchaeus' hospitality. If he was the Messiah, he would have smelled ten miles against the wind that that man was a sinner. And he should not have associated himself with that rotten sinner. He cannot be the Messiah. He would have had more discernment. Number two. They said we also watched him. There at the pool of Bethesda. When he healed that cripple. Who was 38 years a cripple. After he healed him. On the Sabbath, on the Sabbath, 
He instructed that man to pick up his mattress and carry it home. Imagine on a Sabbath. No, he cannot be the Messiah. He is a fake. He is an imposter. He needs to be exposed and he needs to be done away with. And then they said, now, we are going to hatch a plan which is foolproof. And I think the biggest brains in Israel worked on that plan. They said, when Jesus is surrounded by a big crowd of people, teaching, preaching, healing, whatsoever, we will bring to him a person caught in the very act of adultery. And then we will say, teacher, the law of Moses says that this person must be stoned to death. What do you say? Now, he could only give two answers. He could only say, number one, my dear friends, you know that I am the friend of the sinners. Why do you want to be so cruel today and kill that woman, execute her so early in the morning, Let her go home. If Jesus had that, they would have said, People of Israel, you heard with your own mouth, this Jesus is speaking against the law of Moses. He cannot be the Messiah. If Jesus would have said the opposite, Yes, my dear Pharisees, you're perfectly right. Come on, boys, pick up the stones and give it to her. If Jesus had said that, he would have been in conflict with the Roman or with the Roman occupation force. They would have arrested him because death sentences were only going through Rome or their authorities right there. Number one. And number two, well, then even Jesus would have to recognize that we are the keepers of the law of Moses. So no matter what Jesus would have said, the one or the other, it was the trap. He would have been in big trouble. That is the background. Do you get the point? Now, I start preaching. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, He who is without sin among you, throw the first stone at her. That moment something happened 2,000 years ago. What happens now in this meeting, February 2, 2013, in Vero Beach, the Holy Spirit began to move. The Holy Spirit began to move. Oh, the breath of God. There stood that old, most senior Pharisee stones already in his pockets. It was ringing in his ears. He who is without sin among you cast the first stone at her. That moment, the Holy Spirit touched him. Something like this. <laughs> and there he stood and suddenly, this is what I believe, suddenly, a miracle happened to him. For the first time in his life, he had a vision. He had a vision with open eyes in broad daylight. What did he see? I know that from an eyewitness who was there, the Holy Spirit. What did he see? He saw two 
tables of stone with the Ten Commandments engraved. And he couldn't but read commandment number one. And after he had read commandment number one, a very scary voice rose inside of him, very loud, and shouted only one word. Guilty! Oh. He thought his colleagues had heard that voice screaming inside of him. He couldn't help but read commandment number two. The same voice again. Guilty! Number three, four, five. Guilty, guilty, guilty! Right up to number ten. He started to perspire. I dare not throw the first stone at that moment. If I throw the first stone at that moment, woman that stone will kill her but then it will jump back like a football and kill me too because I'm also guilty if I throw the first stone I'm committing suicide I will not do it he looked left he looked right he saw everyone was busy with themselves. And that voice was still accusing him. And then he did something. He picked up his holy garment. Left, right. Put in the reverse gear. And backed off. There was the second senior Pharisee. When he heard, he who is without sin among you, throw the first stone at her. He had a similar experience. The Holy Spirit touched him. What happened? His mind went back. Wednesday, last week, he saw himself in a beach house doing exactly what he now accused that woman of. The same thing. Who he, who he who is without sin. I dare not throw the first stone. It will kill her. And jump back like a tennis ball. Right between my eyes. And I will be killed as well. He also put in the reverse gear. And backed off. My Bible says. From the oldest to the youngest, they all backed off. What did Jesus do in the meantime? What did Jesus do in the meantime? He had stooped down, the Bible says, and wrote with his finger on the ground. Now, there are books written speculating what Jesus might have written. Now, I want to add my own speculation. I believe, I think I'm very near to what truly happened. I believe Jesus wrote on the ground what the Holy Spirit wrote into the hearts of those men. Just one word, guilty. Guilty. All people are guilty before God. We are all sinners and come short of the glory of God. This is the first lesson Jesus wanted to teach. Not only that meeting, but all generations. We are guilty. We are sinners. In the eyes of God. And how is it here tonight? Is there anyone here who kept all ten commandments 
from the earliest days until today, anyone, no one, you know what should happen? Actually, I hope it doesn't. Everyone, the oldest, should stand up and walk out right to the youngest because we are all guilty before the living God. This is how the gospel starts. It starts with a disease and then it begins with a cure. The wonderful, wonderful, wonderful cure. Say amen. Amen. And the figure of God is writing guilty into everyone's heart here as well. Is that understood? Okay. Now, I want to ask you a question. How was it that morning in John chapter 8? Was there nobody without sin? Yes or no? Uh -oh. I also heard some yeses. There was one without sin. Only one. And his name was Jesus. The Bible says, He who knew no sin was made sin for us. He was the spotless, the blameless Lamb of God. He who is without sin, throw the first stone at her. Oh my God, what a terrible thing. Jesus had the right to stoop down and pick up the first stone and throw it into the face of that woman. He had the right to throw stones into the faces of those hypocritical Pharisees. He has the right to throw stones into my face and into your face because we are all guilty. But he didn't do it because he had said, the Son of Man has not come to destroy. He has come to save the world. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. What a wonderful Jesus. What a wonderful Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, let me turn to that woman. When that woman was arrested by those Pharisees, ha, ah, they grabbed her. They grabbed her. And they said, you filthy thing. Today you're going to die. We caught you in the very act of adultery. She resisted them. She resisted them. She said, you can't judge me because you are not better than me. You cannot judge me. And by the way, I think I know you. <laughs> and I've also seen you before. You want to judge me? You cannot judge me. They said, no debate. Come on. And they kicked her. They were screaming, they were shouting, but she had no option. They already had the stones in their pockets, as I already indicated. And they said, you will die today. And then with one big kick in the end, she was just thrown forward and landed right at the feet of Jesus. And then something happened.
that shocked her like nothing ever before in her life. Do you want to know? That woman looked up to the man at whose feet she was lying. And Jesus happened to look down and for a split of a second, their eyes met. That woman got a shock because for the first time in her life, she looked into sinless eyes. She couldn't get over it. She started to cry. She said, none of them can judge me. This one can judge me. Whatever he says, death or life, I will accept his verdict. Yes, I am a sinful woman. What is the verdict? She heard the voice of the accuser. Shouting, teacher, Moses says she must die. What do you say? She was so nervous. She was so mixed up. She did not hear the first part of the answer of Jesus. She did not hear when he said, he who is without sin among you. She only heard when he said, throw the first stone at her. She put her arm on her head. She cried again. She said, please let the stones come. I am guilty. I am a sinner, please. Why are you waiting so long? I am an adulterous woman. Please let the stones come. And when the stones did not come, she looked up. And I like that line here in verse 9 when it says, Jesus was left alone with that woman. That is always the moment of salvation. Jesus and that woman alone, imagine, alone! And then Jesus starts to speak. And he says, woman, where are your accusers? She looked around. He says, has nobody condemned you? She said, Lord, they're all gone. No one has condemned me. And then the one who could have condemned her said, neither do I condemn you. Go in peace and sin no more. Sin no more. The moment the heart of Jesus opened like a fountain, waves, waves emanated. The heart of that woman opened. And that fountain flowed right into the heart of that woman. And suddenly she was gasping. Wow. Now I know what love is. What I used to call love was actually rottenness and death. Now I know what love is. The love of God is greater far than any pen or tongue can tell. It reaches high beyond the stars and reaches.
riches to the lowest hell. Shout hallelujah. Her chains broke. She was saved. She was renewed. She became a child of God. Right there. And right then. Are you happy? The same Jesus is here. The same Holy Spirit is here. You are here. That wonder will repeat itself here tonight under this tent roof. Jesus and you are alone. You may sit in a big crowd, but I say to you, you are alone with Jesus. Your Savior, my Savior, the Savior of the world. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, here are maybe some people who may say, Bonky, this message is not for me. Because I have been faithful to my husband, and there has been no adultery. I want to say to you, congratulations <laughs> and keep it up. Here may be young people, they say, I've never had anything to do with this type of thing. This message is not for me. I would say to you, congratulations, keep it up. But now, I've got to tell you something more. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. You can have forgiveness for your biggest sin. But you need forgiveness for your smallest sin. With God, it actually doesn't matter whether you have got sins heaped up like the Rockies or you just have one or two or three sins never robbed a bank never killed or you just have got some small sins a lie here a little something there I want you to know one thing If you cannot find forgiveness from Jesus for your small sins, your small sins will make you to go lost. Because whether a small sinner or big sinner, we all need a savior. We all need Jesus, a savior. Hallelujah. hallelujah oh hallelujah. hallelujah glory to God I've got a couple of more things but it's getting better amen the honey is at the bottom here's another thing there are some theological Scholars, they say Jesus was wrong because it is really written in the Bible, our Bible, the Christian Bible. In Leviticus chapter 20 verse 10, it's written that any man or any woman committing adultery shall be stoned to death. They said the word of God was also true for Jesus. Jesus had an obligation to execute that woman because the word of God commanded it. Why didn't he do it? I will tell you and I will pray that you may never forget what I tell you now. 
promise you see why didn't Jesus stoop down and pick up the stones with his hands and throw them into the face of that woman according to the law of Moses because at that time Jesus was already on his way to the cross to die in the place of that woman. He took her death sentence from her, put it on himself. He was executed in her stead in your stead in my stead this is what we call the substitutionary death of jesus he was nailed to the cross for me crucified he died he was nailed to the cross for me jesus was allowed could could that woman sent home with his peace because he had taken her curse and died in her place do you understand when i'm in africa and i preach to these big crowds of different religions can i tell you what i tell them i say in the christian religion no adulterer is ever stoned to death because Jesus took our death sentence, our penalty, our sin upon him that we may be saved, that we may be free tonight. You will be set free. You are no more under the shadow of death and damnation today you will receive salvation because jesus died in your place and in my place are you happy isn't that wonderful oh hallelujah 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 you know, we read, when I read you the scripture, I read to you that the Pharisee said, Teacher, this woman here, we are arrested in the very act of adultery. Can you imagine that I've got a couple of questions on my mind? You see, a woman can do many things, many, many things. But there's one thing a woman can never, 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 ever do. She cannot commit adultery all by herself. If they arrested her in the very act, what happened to the man? May I, may I ask, who was he? Shall I tell you what I think? You want to know? That I only tell you, don't tell anybody else. I think it was a Pharisee. Never trust a hypocrite. Even if he comes in a holy garment. Never trust a hypocrite they wanted to see her dead to prove a point jesus wanted her to be saved to prove his point of salvation today salvation will come to your house you shall leave this tent saved every evil removed jesus saves hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not done yet. 
Do you want me to continue? I want to come back one more time to the Pharisees. It breaks my heart. When the Holy Spirit, remember, touched them. And they were convicted of their own sin. They put in the reverse gear. And backed off. And disappeared. All of them. They were so close to the only one between heaven and earth who could have saved them as well. But they chose to be true hypocrites. And they put in their reverse gear. Because they didn't want to admit that they also were guilty before the living God and this wonderful Jesus. Oh my God. So close and yet so far away. Why? Oh my God, why? It was their stinking pride. I have no better adjective for pride. It stinks. Because God gives grace to the humble. That is true quality. He gives grace to the humble and to those of broken and contrite hearts like that woman she expected to be executed but found eternal life in Jesus Christ I don't know if I can say what I want to say but I will do it anyway if I had been there that day Holy Spirit would have convicted me of my sin. I would not have backed off. I would not have put in the reverse gear. I would have put in the first gear. I would have run forward. I would have knelt next to that woman. I would have raised my hands and say, oh, Jesus, I did not commit adultery, but I've got so many other sins. I also need your salvation. Jesus, save me as you saved her. I also need salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. And this is my invitation here tonight. Don't be a hypocrite and go eternally lost. It is to me as if Jesus has drawn a circle right here in front. He's right in the middle of it. A woman is kneeling there. Do you know what shocks me? Not only the Pharisees had backed off, but the very congregation to whom Jesus just had preached early in the morning. They all were gone. No one was left. No one was left. No one. Jesus is calling you and I beg you kneel next to that woman if you have committed adultery or not it's not the point we all need Jesus 
We all need Jesus. We all need Jesus. I knelt next to that woman. I found salvation. And I thank God for it from the bottom of my heart. He were the judges, the high judges of Israel. Together with the temple police, the holy temple police that arrested that woman. If I was there, if I had been there as an evangelist, excuse me if I say that, I would have shouted, I would have said, Don't go! If you are a judge, if you are the jury, kneel next to that woman and ask Jesus to save you. I don't care what position you have in society. Kneel at the feet of Jesus. It has nothing to do with education. It has nothing to do with upper lip or upper class. It has something to do with your soul. Jesus wants to save you already with immediate effect and then be with him in eternity in beautiful heaven. There is the place. Tonight, don't let this opportunity pass. Tonight, I beg you to kneel at the feet of Jesus. Stop being a hypocrite. Some need to hear that. Don't look who is looking. Look to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Allow me to go one, one more time back to that woman. Is that okay? Yeah. That woman. She was arrested. And they kicked her. That woman never once had on her to-do list to go and attend the gospel crusade where Jesus himself was the preacher. That was not on her agenda. When maybe somebody talked to her about it, she was always far too busy. Now, she had no option. This time, she was not asked. She was kicked to him. They were ready to kick her into the pit and put sand over her. And just by accident, they kicked that woman to the only one between heaven and earth who could have ever saved her. She was very fortunate. The only one. Now, forgive me if I say it. I will explain it afterwards. I'm an evangelist. And I must say, I sometimes feel like kicking too. <laughs> but I am not kicking. I'll tell you why, what I can't understand with people who need a kick. I cannot understand why they don't want to receive this wonderful Jesus. The one who died in their place. The one who said, I'm the resurrection and the life. And the one who said, he who comes to me, she who comes to me, I will under no circumstances refuse. You see, you will be accepted, guarantee. Jesus said so. If you come, all you need is to come. To come. Well, I don't kick because I know one other thing. 
Nobody is going to be kidnapped to heaven. In heaven will only be volunteers. So, I'm not kicking anyone, but I would like to do one other thing. I would like to put my arm around your shoulder and say, my brother, my sister, give me the honor to lead you to this wonderful Jesus. Give me the honor. Something is going to happen here today that will be recounted before the throne of God. And you will forever sing praises to the Lamb that was slain for you. And worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Glory to God in the highest. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? The holy moment has come. I want everybody to stand up, please. Let me pray. Holy Spirit, you are here. You've touched every heart. You have revealed Jesus to us. I thank you for it. And now, Lord, I pray that those who need forgiveness of their sins and need you as Savior, that they may come and kneel at your feet. You said you will not turn them back. You will accept them. And that is why I have preached your word. Let it be so in the wonderful name of Jesus. Now I want to ask, while all eyes are closed, who's here tonight, who wants to kneel next to that woman and say, Lord, I want to receive you as my Savior. I need salvation. Then please lift your hand, wave your hand that I can see. Just wave your hand, please. Wave your hand if you want to receive Jesus. Please wave your hand over here. Anyone, please wave your hand that I can see. And I say to you, today, salvation will go home with you. Jesus, the Savior, he was nailed to the cross for you. Edmund and Kathy are going to sing. A wonderful invitation song and I am here waiting for you to come and kneel next to that woman at the feet of Jesus.